Welcome to the Telfed uh, Independence Day quiz. Uh, I see lots of people are joining. That is great. My name is Jonathan Schmuckler. I'm head of the media committee here in Telfed. Uh, we are seeing lots of new faces. In fact, you know what? Let's go into gallery mode. Let's everybody switch on their cameras for a second. And we'll say hi to everyone. If you're in Bidud in a hotel somewhere and you've just made Aliyah, you win a special prize. You win two weeks in Bidud. Um, so what are we having today is we're having our Independence Day quiz. And as much as I like to hear everybody randomly switching on their microphone and talking about stuff we shouldn't be hearing about, I will be muting you during the, uh, during the contest. It's nothing personal. It's just to make sure we all keep ourselves in control so you can all hear the instructions. So we have got, oh, I can see the Coens. I can see the Blooms. Playing by candlelight, it looks like, but well, that's fine with me. Hello, Stacy. Hi, Benji. We've actually got a great crowd here tonight. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put ourselves back in spotlight mode. You don't need to have your videos on for the remainder of the, uh, the, remainder of the competition. Um, we're playing for amazing prizes. We have literally thousands of shekels worth of prizes to give away tonight. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about our sponsors and tell you who they are. Let's bring them up. So we have some amazing sponsors this evening. Um, we've got a full photo shoot sponsored by Herschel Gutmann. That is a huge prize. You can go and get pictures of yourself. If you think you don't look so good, you can go to Food for Thought. We have gym equipment and one-on-one -on -one personal training. After that, you can get another prize, which is for biokinetic feedback to figure out what you did when you went to the training and why you cannot walk anymore. When you realize that it's not healthy to do exercise, we have amazing prizes from Denny's Deli, from King's Biltong, from Paya Coffee. All of these vouchers are going as prizes tonight. We have scaventures as well, which is a great activity for the family. And we have WizKids. Uh, again, in terms of books. So we have a lot of stuff that we are planning to give away. Um, I'm going to explain the rules in a second and how you participate. You do not need to install any applications. You do not need to pre-register. If you're asking about this background, this is not a virtual background. These are some of my guitars. Uh, you know, as soon as one child leaves the house, you bring another guitar in. My advice to you is don't wait for them to leave. Just bring the guitars in earlier. So I'm going to hand it over now before, before I get started to the uh, current chairman of Telford, who's also my current wife. Not that I have other wives, but uh, she is my wife. So I'm going to hand it over to Batya, who's going to come sit over here and talk a little bit about Telford, and then I'll come back and talk to you. Hi everyone. What an amazing thing to look at the screen and look at the names. And I have to say, I recognize one name of, of, of a family, the, the Duveen family who've just made Aliyah, literally fresh, fresh, fresh off the boat. So it's very special to see people, Vati Kim, Dave Bloom, a past chairman, uh, members of our directorate and just of the community here tonight. So um, really a huge welcome. It's always nice to have a feel good event like this, especially coming up to Yom Azikaron and then Yom Hashoah. So Yom Asmut and Yom, ha sorry, Yom Azikaron and Yom Asmut, sorry. Um, <laughs> Some of us don't want to celebrate sorry. Yom Asmut. No, twice. we don't, we don't. Anyway, so for those of you who are new to Telford or don't necessarily know what we really do. So Telford is the South African Zionist Federation, Israel. And um, we're here supporting the community of Southern African and Australian Olim to build a home in Israel. Um, we believe in strengthening Israel through the contributions of our Olim. Um, we have lots of different facets within our organization. <clears throat> and I urge you all to actually look at our webpage and look at our magazines and see where you could fit in. 
Uh, for starters, we have 200 uh, plus dedicated volunteers across Israel through our regional committees. So wherever you are in Israel, I really do urge you to make contact with the regional committees, whether you need the help or whether you are able to help. Um, it would really be amazing to have you on board. <clears throat> also, we support 170 lone soldiers, both from South Southern Africa and from Australia. Um, it's not a simple thing to be in the army, never mind, it's, it's not a simple thing being a soldier, never mind a lone soldier. So we try and provide um, as much support as we can for these lone soldiers to be a bit of a home away from home. So that is a very important task of TELFEDS. Uh, we also, our main um, activity is Klita advice and supporting our new Olim. Um, you are an Ole forever, I guess. And so there are a lot of different um, things that you could tap into, even if you are a second generation and even a third generation Southern African. So we also have community events. This is an example of one of the community events. Unfortunately, because of Corona, we haven't been able to meet people in, in person, uh, but we've had unbelievable Zoom events. Thank you to Teddy and to Aviva and to the volunteers who've come together and had a way to, uh, to bring people together, even though we haven't been able to actually physically meet you. But we're looking forward to going back to a little bit of normal. So um, that would also be great if you do. <laughs> if you would um, participate in those events. Uh, Telford also has 105 apartments that we rent out. Um, some are in Amishav in Tel Aviv, give, give a time, and some are in Ranana. And that also helps Olim, uh, help, helps Olim have a little bit of a softer landing when you do come here. Uh, we also give free employment counseling and webinars. Uh, the money from the rentals of the apartment is used for um, for our assistance committee, we, we give 400 food cards monthly to help Southern Africans who have fallen on hard times, um, whether it's for food cards or psych psychological help or support. Um, it's not a simple thing to make, Alia. We know that and we try to, to help people as much as possible. And one of our, our flagships is actually our scholarship programs. Uh, we have three scholarship programs. One of them is one for financial need. The second one is um, the PRAS program, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard about, where a student volunteers for three hours a week, and in return, they get a scholarship from Telford. That helps everybody. It helps New Orleans, it helps parents with kids with special needs, it helps the elderly, and that really is the epitome of Telford, to help the community. And um, the last scholarship is SESI, which is South African Studies in is Studying in Israel, where we're trying to encourage South Africans to come and start their studies in Israel with the view that, please God, they will decide to stay here because after all, Telford is the South African Zionist Federation here in Israel. So looking forward to tonight. Thank you to Jonathan. I'm sure it's going to be a great, a great quiz. And Chag uh, Hatzma'ut Sameach. And welcome to all the new Olim. And let's get the show on the road. And thank you to our sponsors. Okay, so let's put our sponsors up again. Lots and lots of prizes to be won. Let me put myself back in the frame. By the wonders of technology, I'm back in this seat. Okay, so how is the quiz going to run tonight? This is now the time for you to get your phones out, your cell phones out, okay? Um, before that, let me tell you what the categories are in case you're feeling nervous that there may be something you don't know how to answer. So we're going to talk about history from the 12th century to the, no, we're just going to talk about the history of Independence Day. We're then going to talk about food in Israel. Who doesn't love food in this country? We love the food. We're going to talk about food in Israel, sport in Israel. The IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, we have questions. There are five questions in each category. Uh, we're then going to go on to inventions. We know Israel is the startup nation. We have more startups than any other country in the world. Uh, we probably have more startups that close than any other country in the world as well. But uh, we are very creative. We are driven to create. And we're going to ask you questions about some cool Israeli inventions. Number six is music. Number seven is movies and television, because we are hot stuff. We have got fowder and we have got chowder. So we, well, we don't have chowder, but we have fowder and we have shtisel and we have so much stuff that Netflix wants. And so we're going to ask you a few questions about movies and Israeli actors and actresses. 
Okay, now how do you play this incredible game? We're going to do the following. On your phones, all you need to do is you need to go to a very simple address. I'm actually going to bring out the QR code for you now, as well as the address. So it's very simple. You can use your phone to scan that QR code down below. You can just open your phone, open your browser. If it's Chrome or if it's Safari on Apple, if you unfortunately use an Apple device. And all you do is type that address in pollev.com slash Telfed, or you scan. What is important is it's going to ask you for your name. Okay, you must put your name. Oren, welcome. Welcome, Oren. I'm muting you, but you have nothing to fear. You will do fine in the quiz. So all you've got to do is put your name when you uh, open up that application. I do need to know who you are. When it shows us the leaderboard, you know, if it's Vanessa, then Vanessa, write Vanessa. Okay. If it's Oren, write Oren Z. If you're playing as a team, let's say you're playing as the Cohen team, write Cohen team. Okay, so that's important. All you need to do is you go to this application, pollev.com slash Telfed in your browser, or you scan the QR code. It will take you to a page. You have to agree, I think, to accept the cookies. And then you simply put your name in and you will get to a landing page which says, Israel Independence Day Quiz 2021. Okay, and that means you are ready to start and it will show you 35 questions. If you've got an issue, yeah, but just telling me, just write in the chat and I will see if you have any problems or you can open your mic and just tell me I'm not managing. And that is where all of the questions and all of the answers are going to appear. So you only need to have that phone with you. You will get a question, 25 seconds on the clock. You get points if you get the question right. You get points for how quickly you get the question right. Okay? So it doesn't help you to answer quickly and just guess randomly because uh, you're not going to get the points. So, so again, I'm just going to explain it. I see that Gerald has joined and we had a few other people joining. So... You take your phone, this device, whatever device you have, you open up the browser on your phone, whether it's a Chrome browser or Safari on Apple, and you just type this address in pollev.com slash Telfed. Alternatively, you can scan the QR code. It'll take you to the website immediately, and you just put your name in. Now, what I'm going to do quickly is remove the spotlight. If you can give me a show of hands quickly, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there's reactions. Okay, on the really bottom, on the right-hand side, there are reactions. Just give me a thumbs up, just like I've done, if you're able to get into the app. So Shiri's yes, Adir, yes, Nathanael Rep, Yoni, Benji, Ariel, Rudolph, that's good. The Rutlands, welcome. Aura, okay, Sarah, I'm going to give you a few more, let's say a minute for you guys to get ready. Let me spotlight my screen again. So that's how we play the quiz. Now, if you're not playing, that's fine. I'll just keep you entertained with random bits of information that I've collected. Okay, we've got almost everybody ready. Ilana Barda. Hmm. I only know one barda. It's the barda from across the road, married to my niece. If you're related, you're not allowed to play. <laughs> right. The chairman is telling me they're not related. All the bardas are related. Like we are all related somehow. That's what they used. My grandmother used to say, it's okay if you divorce your wife, she is still your sister. You know, and I, I thought that was okay. My grand was very progressive. I didn't ask too many questions. Okay, if we're ready to play, I think we've had enough time. We are at 8.15. Let's get started. Remember, all of the questions and all of the answers are going to appear on your phone. So you only need to look at the Zoom screen that you see in front of you uh, for the leaderboard, which I'll, I'll tell you about in any case. So I'm going to take off the QR code for now. 
uh, and let's get started with our Independence Day quiz. So our first question, let me get to the quiz. Okay. And this is going to be our history category. The state of Israel was declared on the 14th of May, 1948. What day of the week was that? You have 30 seconds to respond. What day of the week was Israel declared a state? It was the 14th of May, 1948, but you need to click your answer and tell me what you think. Now, I have enabled the option of change your answer. So if you click something by mistake and you want to resubmit it, that is okay. You can choose an answer and resubmit. That is so that Oren will not shout at me after the quiz and say that he couldn't change his answer. Now, when your time is up, you'll see on the screen at the top, it says the poll is the locked. The poll is locked, is what it says. Yes. Yes, the poll is locked because we are out of time. There is a timer on this. And let's go and see what the answers were. Okay, so the majority of you said it was on a Friday, 56%. And that would be the correct answer, by the way. The State of Israel was declared on a Friday, 14th of May, 1948. Now, does it mean for the leaderboard? And here is where we see who is playing tonight. Now, the important thing is, You'll see a lot of people tied at the moment because you're getting the answers right and you're doing it quickly. So Aviva is in first place. Benji Rutland is in second. The cool Cohen, Mandela, I think I know who that is. Goganor is fourth. So this is where we are with the leaderboard for now. Okay, and we're going to move on to our next question. Yom Ha'atzma'ut occurs on the 5th of Iyar, but you know, we as Jewish people, we never celebrate it on the 5th of Iyar. There's so many issues with the 5th of Iyar. So there is only one day of the week when you could actually have Yom Ha'atzma'ut on the 5th of Iyar. Only one day of the week. And my question to you is, which day of the week would that be? Would it be on a Monday? Would it be on a Tuesday? Would it be on a Wednesday? Or would it be on a Thursday? So that, that means... Which day could we actually celebrate Yom Ha'atzma'ot on the 5th of Iyar as it's supposed to be celebrated? Completely confusing you this question. You're like, I don't understand. There are two dates. How could we have two dates for the same celebration? We can. The poll is locked. 27 of you managed to answer that question. And the correct question is, it's actually a Wednesday and the reason for that is that the 5th of Iyar, I could give you the whole logic, but the 5th of Iyar can only fall on four days of the Gregori Gregorian calendar. And that could be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Shabbat. So we would only celebrate it if it fell on a Wednesday on the 5th of Iyar. And by the way, we don't celebrate it on the other days because it would be on Shabbat, the day after Shabbat, the day before Shabbat, the day that we would think about Shabbat, and the day that we didn't think about Shabbat, so we can only celebrate that on one day. So what is the leaderboard looking like? The Raps, hello the Raps, I like that name. The Raps are now in first place, Benji holding on to second, Sippy in third place, hi Sippy and welcome. The Rutlands are in fourth, Aviva is in fifth with all the other people sharing. Okay, I see we're starting to get into the game. Uh, just by the way, if you joined us, I'm just going to put this in the chat. If you've joined us and you didn't join in time, I'm going to type the actual uh, the actual address into the chat if you're joining us late, so you can still go have a look there. Right, next question. How many women signed the Declaration of Independence? None, one, two, or five? So, you know, we have the famous signing of the Declaration of Independence. How many females signed the Declaration of Independence? Oh, lots of you answering this question because you are sure that you know the answer. 37. Oh, I like that. Okay, remember, you can change your answer if you are not 100% sure. Right. The time is up. The correct answer to that question where 45% of you got the right answer, were two. There were two women who signed the Declaration of Dependence. One of them was Golda Meir, and the other was my grandmother. 
Her name was Rachel Cohen, my grandmother. Rachel Cohen was the second woman who signed the Declaration of Independence. What does it mean for the leaderboard? Oh, Benji Rutland battling it out. Sippy, Sigalis in second place. The Cool Cohens and Ilana are now battling with Shani Fish and Surba Azur. I like that, Surba Azur and Sarah RC. Okay, so the leaderboard is chopping and changing. We're only showing, of course, the, the top 10. Uh, and let's see what happens with our next question. Let me just check on Zoom, who has decided to open the microphone. Okay, we're cool. So let's go to the next question. What was the first country or who was the first country to recognize the newly formed state of Israel, which was the first country that officially recognized the state of Israel? Uh, the fourth country you can see, by the way, I'll take off my video, but you can see it all on your phones. So you don't need to look at the Zoom for the questions and answers. They are all on your, all on your phones. So what do you guys think? We have 34 results in 35. The poll is locked. Who was the very first country to recognize the state of Israel? It was the United States of America. Funny, nobody put Germany. So 53% was America, and that was the correct answer. Meaning, Benji is still in first. Cool Cohen's and Sorba Azur are tied for second place. Sarah RC and Sipi Sigalis. Go Ganor, oh, the hawk. I've got such interesting names coming up. The hawk and Shani Fish are together. You see the hawk and the fish. Okay, let us see where we're going with our next question. How many ministers were in the very first government formed in March 1949? So we created a state and then we formed a government. How many ministers were in the very first government formed in March 1949? Was it 12? Was it 14? Was it 17? Or was it 21? Hmm. How many ministers were in that government? Whoops. Let me move my picture to the right. Okay, so let's see what everybody thought. Everyone said 12. That is the correct, well, not everyone, half of you said 12 ministers were in the very first government, and that is true. What does it mean for the leaderboard? Woohoo, Benji, Benji, you're doing well. But Surba Azur, Surba Azur, we could make that one word, is now into second place. Goganor in third, and the hawk. The hawk has his or her sights on you guys, okay? The hawk wants to make its presence felt. Uh, in this in this competition. Now, the interesting thing, by the way, is we formed the first government in March 1949. And I went to have a look how long that government actually stayed, how long that government stayed in power for, because today we have elections every, every three months. So the first government was formed in March 1949. And the Prime Minister resigned on the 15th of October 1950. So nothing's changed. And they formed another government which lasted one year as well. So as I say, nothing has changed. We're all doing the same stuff 73 years later. Now we're going to move on to our next category. This is our next category, just to remind you what is happening. Uh, we've finished with history and we're moving on to the food category. So in 1953, David Ben-Gurion went to Osem and said, there is a big rice shortage in the country you need to come up with something else which is based on wheat. And what was the result? So what was the result? What did we come up with? Was it couscous? Was it ptitim? Was it kurtonim? Or was it burgol? Which could all be the names of, I don't know, bands from Bulgaria. But uh, what was the product that was created by Osem all the way back in 1953, which is also an Israeli invention, by the way. So the product that was created, let's see what you said. Excellent. I'm glad you all know Ptitim. Ptitim, a very interesting invention in Israel that was created by Osim way back in 1953. 
And here is the leaderboard, Benji Rutland out there in first place, but only by 200 points. Uh, we have the Hawk in fourth, Cool Cones in fifth, and Crystal Rudolph is right in sixth place. So there is lots and welcome to the blooms onto the podium, onto the top 10, Jared M. Also now entering and Shiri B, Shiri B in seventh place. Hello, all the new people on the board. Our second food question, what ingredient plays a key role in sabich? Sabich, which sounds like a disease, but it's not, it's a food. It's sabich, what is the key ingredient out of these four in the food known as sabich? Is it smoked salmon? Is it falafel? Carrots or eggplant? What is it? I don't know if you've had sabich as new olim to this country. You know, bryflace and burovos and all that stuff. It's okay. But here we have other stuff. So sabich, I think you've all answered. Let's see what you said. 95% of you said eggplant. It is eggplant and hard-boiled eggs stuffed into a pita, covered with trina. It's delicious. You should have one every day. The cool Cohens moved up into fourth place. They like that question on Sabich. And uh, Crystal Rudolph in sixth place now. Okay, let's keep moving. How many Michelin-starred restaurants are there in Israel? We have an amazing, amazing food scene in this country. Amazing chefs and restaurants. How many restaurants have a Michelin star? None, one, two, or four. How many do you think? 17 seconds left on the clock. Lots of people voting saying, mm, is it two? Is it four? Is it five? Is it six? Well, it can't be six. It's not an option. Okay, let's see what you think. Time is up. Let's go back to our answer board. And this was an interesting one. The majority thought that there were two restaurants with a Michelin star. Funnily enough, there are no restaurants in Israel that have a Michelin star. I recently read uh, an article on the fact that there is a campaign against Michelin because they're saying, how can it be? We have such amazing chefs and we have such amazing restaurants and yet we do not have a Michelin star. So we don't have any. And that means, hoo -hoo, the cool cones and Ilana into third place, tie, in second, excuse me, tied with Tzur Bazur, Sarah RC in fourth, tied with Shiri B. The reps are back on. Hey, the reps, welcome back. And Steve Puderman, I can see you there in 10th place. Welcome onto the board. So now here is our next question. Which Israeli chef just received a Michelin star for his restaurant in Paris called Shabur? Who is the chef who just received his Michelin star for his restaurant in Paris. So while we don't have Michelin stars in Israel, uh, we have a couple of chefs who have Michelin stars overseas. Who do you think that is? Asaf Granit, Moshik Rot, Eyal Shani, or Jonathan Rochefeld, all very well-known celebrity chefs in this country. 76% of you got that right. Uh, it is a huge honor for him. Uh, Moshik Rot, who is underneath, actually has the record, the Michelin record, uh, for two stars awarded in the uh, shortest period of time for his restaurant in the Netherlands. I think he got two stars in three months, in the space of three months. And unfortunately, he just closed that restaurant which was a great pity. But uh, Asaf Granit is the correct answer. Sarah RC approaching second place, challenging the Cool Cohens and Ilana. Shiri B tied in third place. The Raps Sir, anybody new? Jared's there. And Gully. Gully is in ninth place, tied with the Hawk. Okay. Okay, if anybody would like to join and still play along, Go into the chat. In fact, you don't need to go into the chat. Give me one second. I will do something for you now. 
if you're joining us now, I've just put on the QR code and I've put on the website that you can go to. You can play along. If you're joining us now and you're starting to play, I'd like to thank you for being so optimistic that you could still win, but who knows? You could. So that is at pollev.com slash telfed. And there is the QR code that you are welcome to scan. Okay, Israeli dairy cows. We are going to talk about dairy cows. You know why? Because nobody speaks about dairy cows. They are forgotten. You don't wake up in the morning and say, hey, do you know what happened with the dairy cow next, next, next door? And then, you know, my wife says, you can't talk about the neighbor like that. And I said, ah, all right, fine. But what is the amazing thing that our dairy cows in Israel are renowned for? Is it because they produce 50% less methane gas, which is a massive problem? Is it because they produce the most milk in the world of any cow? Is it because we use the least antibiotics or because they can produce milk without lactose, which is an Israeli invention? What is the amazing fact that is true? And as, as you can see, obviously, that is how Israel promotes, you know, come to the dairy school, the Israeli experience. Everything is fun here. Right, so let's go and see what you thought. The highest yield of milk in the world is the correct answer. Well done, everyone. It is true. We have incredible production, much higher than any other country. And many farms in the world are trying to learn how we produce or how we're able to get such high production uh, from our dairy cows. What does it mean? Benji has been at the top of the board since the beginning. I think someone's got to move Benji off first place. Will it be the cool Cohens and Ilana? Sarah and Shiri still battling third place. The reps, uh, fifth, Tsurba Azur in sixth, Jared Steve. Putter Max is in ninth place and the Hawk is in 10th place. Okay, excellent, everybody. We're moving on to the next category, which is sport. Okay, so we have some interesting things happening in sport. And our first question in the sports category, let me just remind you if you uh, didn't remember. These are the categories we're playing tonight. So we've done history. We've done food. We're moving on to sport. After that, we're going to go to the IDF, inventions, music, and movies. So we've finished the first two categories and we're going back to this question. So, no. Denny Avdia, who does he play for? There he is. Chicago Bulls, Orlando Magic, Washington Wizards, or the LA Lakers. Who does Denny Avdia play for? He was just on the news recently with Yom HaShoah. He had painted or written Iskor on his uh, shoes when he played and was interviewed as well. So who does he play for? 38 of you responding, that is fantastic. 82% of, uh, of you wrote the Washington Wizards, that is correct. By the way, poor Denny signed a contract for approximately $20 million, which will be paid to him over the next four years as a rookie. So we are collecting here at Telford for Denny Avdia, if any of you would like to donate something towards him. Uh, let's see what that means for the leaderboard. Benji and the Cool Cohen still locked in first and second. Putamax. Okay, nothing is changing on the scoreboard. Everybody is pretty much locked in place. Let's go to our next question about sport. Yossi Benayun, the Diamond of Dimona. That's got to be the best name you could have in this country, the Diamond of Dimona. Uh, well, they couldn't call him like the nuclear research facility of Dimona. It wasn't as cool. He has played for Arsenal, West Ham United, Chelsea, and one other team. What team did he play for? There is his Chelsea outfit, but what was the team that he played for in addition? Tottenham, Manchester, United, Manchester City, or Liverpool? What is the correct answer? Yossi Benayun. What was the team that he played for, in addition to all the others listed above? Okay, the poll is closed. 
Correct answer is Liverpool. 70% of you almost got that answer right. What does it mean for the leaderboard? The cool Cohen's with just, it's 25 points in it. Benji, what has happened? Why did you drop to fifth place? So the Cool Cones and Ilana are in first place. Sarah RC is in second. Shiri B is in third. The Raps in fourth. Benji. Now, I just want to remind everybody, we have amazing prizes tonight. And we're actually giving out seven prizes, not just for the top three. We're actually giving out for the top seven people on the leaderboard. So if you're anywhere between one and seven, there are fantastic prizes to be won. The Jacobs family, welcome to 10th place. So uh, still lots and lots to play for. The team, uh, the Israeli team, Startup Nation, right? Represented Israel in which major sporting event? So it did actually happen in 2020. Was it the Davis Cup? Was it the Rugby World Cup? Was it the Tour de France? Was it the UEFA Cup? Where did Team Israel represent Israel in a major sporting event? What do you think it was? Okay, three seconds to go on the clock. Poles are locked. And the correct answer was the Tour de France. We've forgotten about that little sporting event. This team's actually been around for quite some time. Their new name is Startup Nation. And they were cycling as a team in the Tour de France. So the Cohen's in first with Ilana, the Raps, Benji. Yes, I knew I could motivate you. I could inspire you to push back to fight back to third place. Sarah, Steve, and Putamax are shifting the board. Jacob family holding 10th place. Excellent, okay. Who is the only Israeli athlete who has won two medals at the Olympic games? Okay, I'm not talking about gold medals, just medals in general. Which Israeli athlete, there's only one, has won two medals at the Olympic games? Arik Zevi, uh, Yael Arad, or in Smudja or Gal Friedman. Who is it? You may be familiar with some of their names, maybe not, but only one of them actually has two gold medals. Right, I'm seeing the results. 35 of you getting your answers in. 37, that's better. Let's see what the correct answer was. It is Gal Friedman. He is a Olympic windsurfer. And he is the only Israeli who has won two medals at different Olympic Games. Uh, and that was the correct answer. Okay, what does it mean? Hoo, hoo, hoo. You go, Benji. Back into second place, looking to oust the cool cones and Ilana. Ilana, it's nothing personal. It's just that you are attached to the cool cones. I mean, if you were playing by yourself, maybe you wouldn't be ousted. But... Steve is moving into third place. Shiri B, the reps. Let's see who's new. The Rutlands are now tied in ninth place with Putter Max. As we come to our final question in category three. In September 2020, Linoy Ashram won a gold medal at the European Championships in which sport? What was she competing in? Judo, ryth rhythmic gymnastics, swimming or rowing? Which was the sport in which... Linoy Ashram won a gold medal, and she is one of our very big hopes for the Olympics that are coming up soon, in fact. So let's see what you guys think. Poll is locked. Well done. This quiz is about knowing that you live in this country and know something about our athletes. 92% of you said rhythmic gymnastics. She is very successful. Um, and what does it mean for the leaderboard? Oh, not much, because that was an easy one. So she will be in the Olympics coming up in July 2021 in Jerusalem this year. Amazing that we are hosting the Summer Olympics here in Jerusalem. Make sure you get your tickets and you reserve a parking space for that. All right, I'm just going to take us out of spotlight for a second. Everyone give me a thumbs up if you are still with us and still enjoying yourself, Vanessa, that's great to see, the reps, Benji, that's all cool, okay, I'm glad to see you're enjoying yourself, it's important to enjoy ourselves, you know, COVID is almost done, 
I talk to colleagues a lot overseas. I work at a company called Amdocs, and we're very fortunate, very fortunate in Israel that we are kind of beyond all of the um, lockdowns and uh, a lot of them are still in the midst of it. So I have no idea why we're doing this on Zoom, but maybe next time we'll do it in a bingo hall or something else like that. Yes, I agree. Okay, let's spotlight for everyone and let's move on to our next category. We have finished sport. We are moving on to the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force the army, the navy, everything will be spoken about. Let's start with the Air Force. Iron Dome was introduced when? So when was the Iron Dome introduced into service? Iron Dome has shot down around two and a half thousand missiles since it was deployed. One of my twins is in the Iron Dome in the Air Force. That's her in the picture being launched. She's very skinny. She's a firecracker, my daughter. Okay, what did you all think? What did you think? 2011 is the correct answer. It actually went into, uh, in 2012, uh, was, was very active. 63% uh, of you got that right. Oh, the rap's movie. Oh, there's all. Sippy, welcome back to the board. Sippy, I'm hoping it's Sigalis. If not, I'll just call you Sglis and Sherry B back on the board. Fantastic. So that was a question about the Iron Dome. Next question. Givati has a purple beret, but where did the inspiration or where did, what was the reason this purple was chosen for the Givati Brigade's beret? What do you think the answer to this question is? Was it inspired by the original commander's name, Duvdevan, which is a cherry, but it was inspired by his name? Did his daughter choose it because it was her favorite color? Was it inspired by the Negev iris, which is beautiful purple color? Uh, or was it inspired by the US Army Special Forces Purple Berets? Why did they choose purple for the Givati Brigade Beret? And in that picture is the other half of my twins, that is Eitan, who is in Givati at the moment with a purple beret as well. So what did you think the answer was? Oh, this was an interesting question. And the strange thing here is when they were looking for a unique color, uh, Colonel Duvdevan went home and showed his daughters a whole range and said, what's your favorite color? And they were purple, it's gotta be purple. Had they asked the chairman of Telford, it would also have been purple because she also likes purple. So uh, this was the reason that purple was selected. And then he obviously confirmed it and everybody said, yeah, it's a cool color. Let's, let's choose it. Benji Rutland back into first place. Whoa. The Cones in second, Steve in third, the Raps in fourth, the Hawk in fifth. Okay, so a bit of movement happening on the board. Let's move to our next question. What is the name of Israel's super tank? We've got one of the best tanks in the world. Is it the Rechavia, the Barak, the Merkava, or the Akavish? What is the name of our Israeli-designed super tank that is regarded as one of the best tanks in the world? You may not see it in the picture. That is Bacha driving the tank. You know, when there's traffic on Achuzah in Ranana, that's the only way you get through is by driving your tank down the main road. 38 of you have voted, 92% said the Merkava, that is true, that is the tank that was uh, designed and deployed and still used in Israel today. Okay, oh, since everybody knew that answer, not too much movement on the board, let's get to your next question. Which of the following is not a gun designed in Israel? Which is not a gun designed in Israel? So the Nachash, the Negev, the Galil, or the Tavor, which is the name of a gun that is not designed in Israel. Israel has a huge um, military uh, industry, and we sell a lot of weapons, design a lot of weapons, and sell them. One of them is, however, not a weapon that we designed and sold. It is the Nachash is, is the right answer because that is not a weapon designed in Israel, but the Negev, the Galil, the Tavor, the Jericho, lots and lots of weapons. So what does that mean? 
Oh, Sherry B, welcome to fourth place. Sippy's in 10th. Gogan are in eight. The Rutland's in fourth. The Hawk. Hello, the Hawk. You are in sixth place, which is good. So you're moving up in the board. Okay, final question. Lieutenant Colonel Efrat Kaikov Levy made history this year. She became the first female something in the army. What was it? Squadron commander in the Air Force, battalion commander in the IDF artillery, commander of a dolphin class submarine in the Israeli Navy, or commander of the first woman only special forces unit, which was uh, recently created. Um, only female only special forces unit. What do you think was unique about what she did this year, the position that she held this year? Right, you've all voted. And the answer is she became the first battalion commander in the IDF artillery corps. And she uh, uh, is the first woman to achieve that, that rank and that role. Okay, let's just see. Cool, okay. The Cohens are back, 16,000 exactly. Benji, you are not out, nobody's out the game. Ari, welcome Ari to ninth place. Haven't seen you in the top 10. It's good to see some fresh blood battling it out with the Jacobs family. Okay, we're finished with the IDF. We're gonna move on to the category five, inventions. Which of the following was not invented? Not, okay, was not invented in Israel. Was it Waze, was it Wix? Was it get or was it WhatsApp? Which of the following apps in front of you was not invented in Israel? Meaning that three of them were, and we like to invent stuff here. Five seconds to go. Okay, let's see if you all got this one right. 80% of you said WhatsApp, that is true. Waze was definitely in that was actually invented by guys out in the USA in Silicon Valley uh, and so that is the correct answer the Rutlands are moving the Jacobs family is moving the top leaderboard stays very very uh, uh, you know it's neck and neck at the top of the top three places which of these games was not invented in Israel? You see, I'm highlighting all the amazing stuff invented in this country, except one of these games was not invented in Israel. Tucky, Connect 4, Mastermind, Rummy Cube. One of those was not invented in Israel. The rest of them were. And to help you, I have put a generic picture of happy, smiley children with no lice playing a board game. Complete fabrication, obviously. They are happy. And let's see if you got the answer right. So Connect4 was the correct answer. Rummy Cube is, uh, was invented here, as was Mastermind, but Connect4 was not. So what is that done? Benji, there is a huge battle going on between Benji Rutland and the Cool Cones and Ilana. The Hawk. The Hawk is very, very quietly moving up the leaderboard i don't know who the hawk is i need to go back to zoom and check who the hawk is but the hawk is in third position take note of the hawk sherry b also very quietly just moving up the leaderboard to fourth place and so is ari so there's definitely been a change in the leaderboard which israeli startup had the biggest exit in 2020 now there was a huge impact on the market because of covid but the israeli startup industry uh, companies uh, listing IPOs and exits being bought didn't slow down. Now I'm going to give you four options. Who had the biggest exit? Was it Mellanox? Was it are they a chip manufacturer? For Scout Cybersecurity, Move It. We all know Move It, Public Transport, or Checkmarks was Application Security. Who had the biggest exit in 2020? Right, everybody's getting their answers in. You know what's so funny? I'm actually, I'm actually smiling because in my head, I'm saying like South Africans just made Aliyah. They go, no man, what is a chip man? They make chips, man, is it slop chips? You know, no, well, not slop chips. So the answer was, the answer was Mellanox, the third biggest 
uh, exit in the history of, of Israeli startups. They were bought for $7 billion, $7 billion, Mellanox. Nobody's heard of them. Nobody knows where they are. Uh, it's a company that's been around for quite a while in Yokniam. If ever you have nothing to do and you want to go to a place which has uh, very little to see, go to Yokniam. You can pass through Yokniam on the way to other places. But Yokniam has a high-tech area and Melanox, well done to them. Okay, next question. It's an interesting one, but let's see the leaderboard. Well, Pit Putamax is moving and Benji is, mm, I don't know if you're solidifying your lead, but you're in the lead. Danit Peleg is credited with creating the first ever what? Made at home on a 3D printer. And I'm going to give you a picture, a picture to give you a clue. And, and you've got to guess what it was from this picture. So what was it that she is credited with making? Now you can see there is an athlete there, a Paralympic. So did she print artificial limbs for, for uh, athletes? Snowboards, ready to wear clothing, or AI driven robotic arms, small arms that could help disabled people that you can print in your home. What was it that she did, which is a very interesting invention? Danit Peleg. Okay, and the answer which half of you got was ready to wear clothing. So the outfit that you see in that picture is printed on a 3D printer. And she has designed a whole range of clothing that you print on your 3D printer uh, and you can wear it. And I would suggest to you guys, if you have time afterwards, go to YouTube. She is an incredible Paralympic and she dances. And she did a dance at the opening of the Olympics. Uh, one is with a robot. Um, amazing to see how she can move on those, on those uh, artificial limbs. So very interesting. What does it mean? Oh, Ari and the Raps are back on the leaderboard. The Hawk is in third place. Shiri is in fourth, battling out there. Ari is in fifth place. Okay, moving along. How many Nobel laureates do we have in total? We're talking about inventions. We're talking about being creative. How many laureates do we have? People who have won the Nobel Prize in total. Our final question, and then we have two categories to go, and we'll be finishing. So how many people do you think in Israel, how many winners do we have in chemistry and physics and mathematics and peace? We have a couple of Nobel Prizes as well. Okay, poll is locked. Correct answer is 12. We have 12 Nobel laureates. The Hawk, <laughs> the Hawk is in second place. Sherry B is in third place. The cool Cohen's and Ilan, I don't know what happened, knocked off the perch by the hawk. Ari Kuchar or Kuchar, uh, whatever, is in fifth place. Steve is in sixth. The Rutland's in seven. Putamax, the Raps, and Go Gan Or. Okay, we have finished inventions. We are moving on to the best category ever, which is music. So Static and Benel, incredible duo of Israeli musicians. What is Static's real name? Now, that is not Ben L's body. That is my body with his head photoshopped onto it. Bache is laughing. Don't know why. That's rude. Um, okay, what is his real name? Static and Ben L. If you're asking yourself, who are Static and Ben L? Well, very successful musicians, composers, writers, performers. So the correct answer is Liraz Rousseau. Liraz Rousseau is the real name of uh, Static and Benel, uh, of Static's name, and uh, Benel Tavori, the son of Shimi Tavori. Uh, let's see what that does for the leaderboard. The Raps making a move. Sarah RC, welcome back into 10th place. Okay, let's move on to our next category. I'm just moving to my notes. Right. The Eurovision was cancelled um, last year, as was most everything. Uh, like in 2020, I celebrated my 50th birthday and cancelled everything. And this year, the chairman celebrated her 50th birthday. And I got her the same thing. Cancellations. Everything. I ordered her a ring and I cancelled it. I ordered her a cruise and I cancelled it so that we had a very fair 
kind of birthday together. Right. What is the song that Eden Alena, who is our nominee for the Eurovision, what is the song she will be performing? We actually picked this online, all of us here in Israel. What is the song? There she is. Is it Fekker Libi, La La Love, Ooh La La, or Set Me Free? What is the song that was picked by Israel to go and represent us in the Eurovision? An amazing performer, Eden Elena. Three seconds to go. Let's see what you said. Set Me Free is correct. Fekri Libi was the original song she was supposed to sing uh, in, the, in the previous one, but Set Me Free is the song she will be singing. Ooh, the cool cones and Ilana moving back, the hawk in third. Okay, okay, let's keep moving. Chaim Witz was born in Haifa in 1949. Chaim Witz. Who is Chaim Witz? How do his fans, he's better known to his fans as by what name? Roger Waters from Pink Floyd, Leonard Cohen, Dennis Lloyd, or Gene Simmons from Kiss. So who is Chaim Witz? Do you know? It's a lovely name, Chaim Witz. Maybe not the best name if you want to go into music. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Chaim Witz. So the correct answer is Gene Simmons the uh, famous bass player of KISS. Uh, he was born in Israel uh, and his original name was Chaim Witz. Shiri B, you go into second place. Cool Cohen's and Ilana in third, The Hawk in fourth, Ari in fifth. Now you all know Noah Kirill, okay? Noah Kirill actually lives in Ranana. Very, very successful. But what was her original first name? Was it Noya? Was it Natalie? Was it Talia? Was it Ilana? What was Noa Kirel's first name? Her, the name that was given to her, and it was then subsequently changed because she had a very serious kidney disease. And on the advice of the rabbi that her parents consulted with, they decided to change her name. Maybe you didn't know that. And the answer is Noya. Her birth name was Noya, and they decided to change it to Noah, also with Tnua. And the rabbi said she will be a great dancer, and she is a great dancer. So Shiri, hoo, 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 into first place, the Cohen's in second, Benji now in third, and the Hawk in fifth. Let's move on. The newly opened Museum of the Jewish People, by the way, if you haven't been to Beit Futsot in a while, it's now, an, it's been renamed, it's been redone. Apparently it is incredible if you want to spend a few hours and they have a lot of stuff on display and they have a special item that was used by Leonard Cohen during his last performance in Israel in 2009. What is the item that is on display in the New Jewish Museum? Is it his hat? He has a beautiful black hat that he wears, his harmonica, his prayer book, or is it his guitar? What is the item? It took them probably two or three years to find it because they wanted specifically the one from his last show and he had it with him. So what do you think it was? Oh, many of you thought his hat. I'm sorry, I threw that in there to confuse you. Uh, it is indeed his guitar. The guitar that he used in the final show uh, is on display in the Jewish Museum. So make sure you go there and check it out. Oh, the leader bought Sur, but Azur, where have you been the whole time? Now you decide to reappear? Wonderful. So Shiri B is in first, the Hawk Ari in third, the Cohen's dropping to fourth, and Benji is in fifth, and Sur, but Azur making a comeback. Now we're moving on to our final category before we announce the winners for tonight okay well we're going to announce the top seven people and then we will contact you and go through the prizes that you have won uh as i said we're giving out seven prizes tonight our final category is movies television programs our first question the valley of tears is a television series about a group of soldiers it's just been picked up by hbo max and it takes place during which war the war of independence the six-day war the yom kippur war 
or the first Lebanon war? Which is the correct answer? There is a lot of good television coming out of Israel. Netflix is hungry, but not just Netflix. HBO is buying, uh, and these series are being picked up and distributed worldwide. So the correct answer, 82% of you got this, is the Yom Kippur War. It looks very, very interesting about what happened during that war. What does it mean? Oh, no change on the leaderboard. Everybody got that right on the leaderboard. So let's move on to the last four questions. Which Israeli actress has performed in both Shtisel and Unorthodox? Who is it? Neta Riskin, Rotem Sela, Agam Rudberg, or Shira Haas? Who is the Israeli actress that has performed in both Shtisel and Unorthodox? And my brother in law, is trying every method possible to get the third season of Shtisel, which has not yet come out on Netflix in Israel, but is out on Netflix in America. If you haven't seen Shtisel, amazing actors, really interesting story about the family. 92% of you said Shira Haas, correct. She's been in the news a lot lately, an incredible, incredible actress. No change in the leaderboard leading up to the last three questions. Which Israeli actress starred in the Netflix hit Daredevil? If you haven't seen Daredevil, it is so cool. But who starred in Daredevil? Was it Gal Gadot? Was it Ayele Tzora? Was it Alona Tal? Was it Noa Tishbi? All actresses that have appeared in uh, productions overseas. Who starred in this? And now you're all saying Daredevil? Never heard of it. Brilliant, brilliant series. So who was it? Time is up. The correct answer is Ayelet Zora. She's actually uh, doing incredibly well, starring in a lot of different movies and TV series. Only 59% 60, uh, got it right. So Shiri, you're in first place. Coming towards the end, Ari is in second, the Hawk in third, the Cohen's holding on to fourth, Benji, the Raps, and Sarah. That is the top seven at this stage. Tsuba Azur moving into ninth. Will you guys be able to shift the leaderboard in the last two questions? Okay. Which Israeli film about migrant workers in Tel Aviv has been shortlisted for an Oscar in the 93rd Academy Awards? What is the name of the movie? that has been shortlisted for an Oscar? Is it White Tiger, White Eye, White Knights, or White Face? What is this movie called about migrant workers? Actually based on a true story. What happened to him while he was uh, in Tel Aviv one night and he made a movie about this? Three seconds to go on the clock, almost at the end of our Independence Day quiz. The correct answer is White Eye, uh, this is a movie, again, uh, which has been shortlisted. Hopefully it'll win. will be really cool. Ari, Ari in first place, tied with Shiri in first place, The Hawk in third place, The Cool Cones in fourth, and Putamax is in seventh with Tsurba Azur in eighth. Now we have one more question coming. It's going to be a tough question. To seal out the evening, let's see what happens. How many Academy Awards have been won by Israelis? How many Academy Awards have been won by Israelis? None, one, three, or five? That's the final question. Born in Tirat Carmel, Sarah, you're telling me? Yes, he was born in Rambam Hospital. <laughs> So let's see, you have two seconds left on the clock. Two seconds for the final question. <laughs> I'm just reading your comments. Tell him to get a VPN. He's, he's done that. 50% of you said three. Maybe you felt it. Maybe you guessed it. That is actually the correct answer. If you'd like to know who they were, we have a film that we, we won an Oscar for a, a, a movie uh, called Skin. Uh, Guy Nativ made that movie, the best live short. Natalie Portman is Israeli. She was born here and not as Natalie Portman. So she has won an Oscar. 
and Niv Adiri won an Oscar for best sound. So we have actually three Israelis who have won Oscars and the final leaderboard. We have Shiri in first place, the Cool Cohens in second. You know what we're going to do now? I'll ask you all to put your videos on. Ari is in third. The Hawk is in fourth. Benji is in fifth. Sarah is in sixth. Tsur, Tsur, you go Tsur. Tsur ba Azur picking up the seventh place. That is amazing. I'm going to remove my spotlight. I'm going to go back onto the gallery view. Let me see. So there's the Cohen's and Ilana give us a wave. <laughs> see Barry's in the background. Shtisol three. It's not good, Barry. Leave it. It's just, what are you eating? Oh my goodness. Okay. Who are, where, where is Surba Azur? I got to check out Surba Azur. Where is he? Are you getting people into trouble? <laughs> I don't get people into trouble. There are the Puttermans. There oh, is Shiri. Awesome. <laughs> oh, there you go. Wonderful. So first of all, I want to say from me, let me, let me go back to my, uh, if you give me one second, sorry. So it's wonderful that you all joined. Uh, I hope you had fun this evening. I have to thank Aviva and I have to thank uh, Nicole. Uh, you know, we put this together. We worked on the idea. They said, make it for kids only. I said, we're all kids. We're all kids at heart. Let's make it for everybody. Um, if you liked it, <laughs> I got the chairman. She's like, if you liked it, donate to Telfit. I'm saying, no, if you liked it, buy me another guitar. If you liked it and you'd like to have another quiz, let's say in three or four months, tell Aviva or tell Nicole and we'll do another one. I think it's really fun. If you have an idea for the quiz, not Independence Day, that's also cool. We can do that. Um, <laughs> You see the cones celebrating? <laughs> you go, the cones. Okay, now, as I mentioned before, we're going to give out seven prizes. Um, the prizes are worth anything from a thousand, which is our top prize, by the way. The first prize is Herschel. It's a thousand shekel photo shoot. He's an amazing photographer. Uh, getting married. Shiri. Was Shiri number one? Who was number one? Let me go back to the quiz. Shiri, yes. Shiri B. You have won a thousand shekels. You can go and get a photo shoot. Herschel. Getting who, married. And I just said she's getting married. Who shoots He's, wedding? Uh, we've already booked him for our wedding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell him to give you a thousand shekels off. Um, and what's going to happen is Aviva oh, and, a good idea. Um, Nicole will contact the rest of the winners to go through what you've won. We're giving away gym equipment and a, and a personal training session. We're giving away uh, biltong gift packs, <laughs> Biltong, uh, Kaya Coffee is giving away 10, 10 coffees and a snack when you go. Kaya has got amazing coffee roasted in Denmark, believe it or not. Uh, we're giving away scavengers uh, and biokinetic assessment, lots of prizes. So well done to the top seven winners. I'm going to read your names out. Shiri B, the Cohens and Ilana, uh, Ari, the Hawk is in fourth, Benji is in fifth, Benji Rutland, Sarah RC is in sixth and Tsurba Azur is in seventh. So you are our winners this evening. But all I want to do is, say, is again, thank everybody. And listen, have a great Yom HaTzma'ut. Uh, have a sad Yom HaZikaron. What can we do? That's how we, that's how we roll in the country. Welcome to all of the new Olim who came. We had a 53? Yeah. 53 Olim arrived at the airport. Huge uh, amount of views on, on our Facebook page. If you're not on our Facebook page, go there, please. Like Telfed and follow us there, and uh, hope to see you soon in one of our outgoing, uh, in our next quiz, and we're going to leave you with a very cool video that I found just to put you in the mood for your mats mode, so again, good night to everybody, and here you can take a listen and enjoy. Across the ocean, under the blue sky, the sun is rising, it's climbing so high. I know a place where we can be freer, we will be stronger, so long will we be keeping our hope. My story, I build my future with ancient glory. 
So take my hand now, we'll be together. The days are brighter, and we'll be dreaming now. Falafel just got real. Oh, 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 oh. I'm saying it.